Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Game. I'm the of the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst, a Callus's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up. Let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Still, I was being serious. It would be best if you didn't throw yourself at him. Give him just a few treats, of, a few treats of, of sweetness, and then make your move. Just like baking a lovely cake, you don't throw all the ingredients at once, do you? I'm telling you, it's not like that at all. I was about to tell him how mistaken he was. He is for the third time. And Callus stepped out of the bathroom. His fur seemed a little damp, and his scarf is a bit wet. It makes me wonder if he's if it makes me wonder if he stuck his whole head inside a water-filled barrel. There, all done. Are you ready to leave? Callus interrupted us in the middle of our conversation and thanked the goddess as he seemed oblivious to what we were saying. Yep, I'm ready. I was just talking to... Zordy! Chef Zordy, at your disposal. Well, well, Chef, I'll leave a good word to my acquaintances about this place. The food here is quite good. Thank you, Lord Callus. Nothing would make me happier. Suddenly, the dog starts acting formally toward a callus, which weirds us both out. So, you knew who I was the entire time. You've been here a few times, sir, and I always remember the faces of my customers. Hope it didn't offend you. No, of course not. You did me a great favor. It was a very pleasant experience. The small baker seems content with what a callus is saying. He's been playing with his mustache for a while now. Callus also seems happy to be talking with this man. Me, on the other hand, I still don't know what to think of him. Here, I have something for the road. They're freshly made. Zordi handles me a sack full of pastries. Oh my god. Wolf, seem, Wolf sees me take it and then bows in gratitude. I do the same when the baker smiles at me. And you, don't forget what we talked about. It might come in handy for the future reference. That single phrase is enough to light up my cheeks once more. And to make it all worse, Akalus is now looking at me with curious expression. D did I miss something? Uh, pay it, pay it, pay it no mind. I, I was just, it was just baking lessons. Heh. <laughs> After leaving Zordi's store, Callus and I walked for 30 minutes before reaching the entrance of the Royal Library. The building is enormous, to say the least. We don't linger much on the outside, though, as we make haste inside. Which was incredibly quiet at the time, as if the entire sound of the world had died down once we so as we set foot in here. Only a few birds can be heard from outside the window. Row after row of shelves for the library from the ground to the very top of the ceiling. The floor is a beautiful design, worked on marble, and the ceiling has some gorgeous paintings, which upon closer inspection displays the entirety of the creation story. Ooh, oh, must be sorry about that. With the three goddesses building the world and giving and giving us sapient beings our free will. This is stunning. That's all I managed to say as my brain was trying to process the entirety of this place. There are some tables situated in the middle of the halls. When I decide to touch them, I am immediately thrown back by their smoothness. I can hardly believe how much work went into making these. Some masterful craftsman must have done it. It was the, it was the same when my father bought, brought me for the first time. There are around 10,000 books and scrolls stored in the library. Each is more interesting than the previous one, mind you. You've read them all? Been trying to. Wait. If there are so many books, we'll never finish looking. It will take us at least a week to complete half of them, I say, finally noticing that this may, may not have been the best idea after all. Please don't fret. There's a way to find the books we need. Oh, hello there. I knew I heard someone making a ruckus in my precious library, but to think it would be the Grand Master himself. As Akalus and I were talking, an older fellow approached us without us noticing. As soon as Akalus saw who he was, his face turned serious and expressionless. The same look he used to have when we first met. It's been a while since we've. It's been a while since the last time I've seen him like this, and the, this man. He's clearly related to a callus, and as he's sp the spitting image of the wolf, but much older, of course. What brings you here? I have been told the king sent you on a very important mission. Hence, why you were not attending to your responsibilities. The man talks slowly and calmly, but I can sense the aggression in his voice. He dislikes a callus and doesn't mind showing it, even when I'm standing right next to him. There's clearly some bad blood between these two. This is part of my assignment, Uncle. If you have a problem with it, I recommend you speak directly with the King. As if I had time to make such a fruitless effort, unlike you. I do take my responsibilities seriously. Alright, one second, y'all. Let me drink my coffee. 
Oh, I got up like less than 30 minutes ago. Hmm. All right. His gaze finally turns to me. He uses those cold eyes to analyze me from top to bottom, his expression turning from curiosity to pure disgust in seconds. And you are... Me? I stutter in my words, as I wasn't expecting the man to address me. Did I speak to you? I believe not. The callus is soon shut down by his uncle. He takes a few steps to get and gets closer to us. Name. Your name. Alright. Um, it's... Eli, sir. Lovely. Tell me, Eli, do you smell this bad all the time, or is it today a special occasion? I see the man smirking evilly while Kaus closes his fist with a lot of force. For a moment, I fear he will punch his uncle in the face. Uncle Dracalus, if you are done smelling my companion, we want to start with our investigation. But of course, don't let me keep you from your essential duties. And don't mind me, I'll just be doing your job. The man turns around with a victorious grin while the callus remains in place. As expressionless as one of those statues from the outside. Although, being so close to him, I can hear him gritting his teeth. It's so weird. I've never seen the wolf so upset. This man must be a real piece of work. Callus? Don't. Not while he's still here. Let's go to the back. Callus whispers and grabs my wrist, forcing me away from the scene. Eventually, we reach a table close to one of the windows and far away from anything else. And that's where... That impudent dick. Prick. Okay. My eyes open wide as I hear a callus say those words. I could hardly believe it. Goody Two Shoes a callus just insulted someone. In his own way, but it, he still did. How could he? How could he? Talking to you like that. My guest. Unforgettable. Outrageous. Deplorable. Hey, it's okay. I don't mind if he insulted me. He's just a jerk. Yes, he is. He just wanted to make fun of me like he usually, like he always does. But now that I've gotten used to his numerous jabs... He needs to insult you. How dare he? What a lack of manners. Callus, calm down. It's not the first time some royal has insulted me. Still, that doesn't excuse... I rub my hand on his shoulder, trying to calm him down. And I managed to help. His breathing goes back to Noel, and his face relaxes. There. Now he's getting upset. I'm sorry, it's just... I've been dealing with him for far too long. I don't mind when he I don't mind when he mis mistreats me, but the fact that he dared talk badly about you, it sent me over my limit. I don't think I've ever seen you that worked up. It made you look cool. What? Cool? That was the opposite of cool. I was so heated. Not cool. Cool like cool, dummy. Cool as in awesome and badass. Callus chuckles and offers me a shy smile as he sees as he sees me all excited. Besides, I don't smell that bad. Do I? No, of course you don't. Your scent is quite pleasant. As Akalus finishes that sentence, he seems to notice what he just said, and now we're both blushing deeply. None of us are saying a word. Has he been sniffing me? What did he even... Shit. Maybe that means I really smell. Anyway, the investigation. Ah, uh, yes, the investigation. Where should we begin? Well, we need a ladder, don't you think? There will be no need. We'll watch closely. Akalus walked towards one of the tables and placed his hand, his hand's palm on top of a symbol that resembles the Eye of Arcanus. Soon enough, the eye begins to glow with a dim blue light, and the table and finally some floor lines. Those lines go over the library until I can no longer see where they went. Eventually, after a few minutes, the glowing stops and Akalus rests on one of, the st one of the chairs. There. They should be here shortly. They? The wolf shakes his head and smirks, waiting, waiting with his arms crossed. I sit beside him, waiting for waiting for whatever he did to take action. Luckily, it doesn't take long before I see something approaching us from a distance. All right, let me sip my coffee real quick, y'all. Ah, delicious. The closer it gets, the more it looks like. Duck your head, by the way. No one can control the speed at which they are summoned. As Akalis said that a flying book flew mere inches past my head, almost hitting me straight on the forehead. After the first one, more and more books came to us. One by one, they started to pile down on top of the table until ten minutes passed by, finally stopping. I watched the show unfold in silence, amazed and scared simultaneously, wondering what would have happened if I hadn't ducked my head. Just imagining such heavy-looking lo heavy books hitting me like that at such high speeds and shivers down my spine. 
Who would have thought a library could be so dangerous? What was that? That, my good friend, is a system that took three entire generations to perfect. As he says it, he sticks out his chest with a proud smirk. My family invested their crime and their time in creating a way to sort and retrieve books more efficiently. So each book is marked with a special ink. Here, check yourself. The callus grabs the first book from the pile and opens it before me. It reads, The Great Pastor Colin and His Work in Church's History. Under the title, though, there's a little marking with the form of the Eye of Arcanus. This ink is reactive to monoflow and attracted to the source. So all you have to do is think about a specific subject, or even better, a specific book. Then, with that in mind, infuse some crim into the table. The table is connected to the floor and the floor to the shelves. Lastly, once the mana reaches the book, it comes flying straight to the table that was used as a conduit. Isn't it wonderful? It is. So this is the use of magic. I'd have never expected it. It could be so practical. I mean, each time I saw magic was just a cast was just a cast of fireball to make water come out of nowhere, but this, this is a whole different level. It is. That's what my father always used to say. Magic can be used for so many bad things, but when it's used with good intentions, it really shines. For a split second, I see a callus' tail wagging. He seems genuinely in love with this, making me wonder how much of his life he spent inside these walls. Well, that will be a conversation for another time. Because right now, we've got a mission we must do. So, are you ready? This is going to be a long evening. Well, if your classes were worth something, I'm more than ready. Ooh, excuse me. Let's get them. And with that... We both, sat, we both sat by the table, each of us picking a book from the dozens in the pile. <clears throat> Eee. I've been so deep in these books that I only returned to the real world when a callus stood up and lit the candles for us. I didn't even notice when the sunset happened. I rubbed my eyes and leaned back on the chair, the fatigue finally catching up to me. It would be best if you rested, Ellie. Eli. I keep saying Ellie, but it makes me th the way it's spelled makes me think Ellie. Eli. I'm used to it, but you were not. If you force yourself too much, you'll damage your eyes. Heh. <laughs> Don't you ever get tired of being right? Not one bit. Now be a dear now be a dear and fetch us some water. The barrel with clean water should be at the end of the hall to the right. Don't get lost. I won't, jeez. I'm not a fucking kid. And off you go. <sighs> okay. I mumble to myself as I stand up from the chair and head in the direction he mentioned. My legs feel sore after spending so much time sitting, but it's not unbearable. After all, I'm doing this for Mary, so I won't dare complain about it. Anyway, I keep those thoughts away from my head at the moment. No use getting upset now. Time to get some water. I turn the corner he mentioned, going to the right. But as I leave his sight, I finally notice how dark this place is. There are only so many candles illuminating the, st illuminating the stands through the most of them not being lit. I wonder if, it's that I wonder if that's a preventative measure to prevent a fire from happening. Oh well, it's not like it bothers me. I've always had good night vision, so I carry on. If the afternoon was quiet, this place is like a tomb at night. Not a single sound can be heard. No rustle from outside. No sound, no bug sounds, no fire sounds, no... Life. It's nothing, just darkness. But then, a sound. Steps. So light that I can barely that I barely noticed it, but I did. And given that the person who gave it is now completely still, I am guessing they didn't want me to be heard in the first place. But where? Where did I hear it from? I try to focus on my surroundings, trying to pick something up. Anything at all. A little movement, no matter what it is. Just move. There it is. I rush towards it, not caring my footsteps can be heard. It won't give them enough time to hide. After all, the halls are long and they have no other way to go. Aha! I say as I turn the corner, but I'm met by darkness. Is it just my imagination? I turn around multiple times, trying to make sure no one is here for sure. It could have been Dracalus. Why would he be hiding, though? It makes no sense. Hello? I say, but I get no answer. Only silence and darkness. Well, not total silence. But why? Why is my heart rushing like this? Why is it going so fast? It wasn't such a long jog. I should hardly be tired. You're afraid. Afraid of what? The dark. The silence. Nothingness. No. No, I... You're wrong. I've never been afraid of the dark. Perhaps. 
But you're afraid nonetheless. Shut up! Shut up, shut up, shut up! I crouched down and put my hands on my ears as if that would keep, help keep the voice away. I don't need you and I don't want to hear you! Leave me alone! Alone? Yes, alone! Go away! Don't you see? You are already alone. No, you're wrong. I I'm not... I'm... I'm not... El Eli! Another voice calls out, for, calls out for me at the end of the hallway. A callus comes running and crouches beside me, placing his hand on each side of my face. He keeps my eyes on him, looking deeper into my soul. Look at me! What? Look at me! The callus doesn't move one inch as he keeps his eyes glued, glued to mine. Is it gone? The voice? Yes, can you still hear it? N no, I don't think so. Good. That's a, f that's a good first step. His voice is calmer and warmer than his usual tone, with some hints of worry in it. His facial expression is soft, and his eyes are as blue as the sky and beautiful as the Great Lake. Don't let it get to you. Come, let's get, let's get you out of here. We'll get some water. Hmm. Thanks. The wolf helps me stand up, placing my arm around his neck, the same way he did back in the store. How did you know? In this place, you can even hear a fly from the other side of the building. And you were screaming quite loudly. Oh, dear. After the incident, the night carries on like normal. Ikalos asked me about the voice again, but I had to tell him the same thing he already knew. It's just a voice that comes and goes. Alright, guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!